Takalosh Boker Or, Mishnah Yomi Mesechab Metzia, Perek Aleph, first chapter, Mishnah Chet, and we're also going to do the second chapter, Mishnah 1. So we're going to start, okay? Matzah Igrot Shum, if a person is going to come and he's going to find Igrot Shum, what does that mean? We're talking about evaluation documents, right? That they're basically coming and evaluating the properties, right? Or Igrot Mazon, or Shtarot, the husband comes and he accepts upon himself to uh, give Parnassah, to sustain or to support his wife's, meaning that it wasn't his own daughter, his wife's daughter, meaning that he got married a second time or a first time, it doesn't matter what, but basically the wife had a daughter already and he accepted upon himself to support this daughter. Or shitre chalitza umeinun, or any type of document of chalitza. Remember chalitza is when the, when the father, when the brother dies without children and instead of doing yibum, he did chalitza. Yibum is marrying her and chalitza is taking off the shoe and then she's able to get married to anybody you want. Or miun. Miun is if that if the, the, the girl was married off by the mother or by the brother, so therefore the, the girl could come and do miun. She could renounce the marriage when she becomes bat mitzvah. Shitre birunin. Shitere Berunin are documents of the, again, we're talking about Dayanim, that they come and they start, you know, about the judgments, right? About going back and forth. Yechol Maaseh Betin, or any type of a document of Betin, Hare Zeyachzid, you could return it to the person. We're not going to suspect that maybe it wasn't given, meaning in the previous Mishnah, we were talking about the, what happened if you found a get? So it could be, maybe the guy got upset, right? You know, he blew his, uh, he was, uh, you know, Moroccan, Tunisian, whatever it was. He blew his, uh, his top off the head. He comes, he writes the get, but then she comes home and she made him this not favorite bad. dish. And also he said, you know what? She's not that bad. Maybe I'm going to keep her. And then he never gave me the get. So now if you're going to come and give her the get, it's a problem. The get was never really bad given. So that was whether it's going to be a get, uh, it's freeing your slaves, the daitiki, which is uh, the will or matana or the receipts. Or the... But now we're talking about other things that you could give it. And we're not going to suspect that somebody came and that they, they actually did, it wasn't given. But if you find these documents in all these types of, whether it's sackcloths and bags or things like that, or you found an entire takhlich of documents, they were, they were all tied together. Or a shtarot, or a bundle of the shtarot. You could still come and give them back. How much is it called an aguda of shtarot? He says, three of them, three documents tied together. comes and he says, if one person comes and he borrows, right, and he puts them together, he give it back to the borrower. But three people borrowing from the same person, for sure it came from the Malve, so you give it back to the lender. What happens if he finds a document? He doesn't know what it is. He doesn't even know how this document got him. So what happens? He has to wait until Eliyahu comes in order to find out what this effect, meaning he doesn't know what is it. Well, he actually borrowed it. He lent money. He doesn't remember this. Uh, leave it until Eliyahu comes. Right? He doesn't know what it is. What happens if the Malve comes and he finds, right, a shobar that was not given? Remember, the shobar is a receipt. That means when you pay up, you get a receipt. He finds a receipt, but uh, he's going to be mekayim, that which is written, which means he cannot come and start collecting from the document anymore. Right? Why? Because once he has a shobar, that's it. Once he has this document, Right, he's not going to do anything else. Right, Perek Bet Mishnalef. Elu Metziot Shelo, Veelu Chayav Laachli. So you've got certain things that you find you could keep for yourself. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers, and then other things you have to actually mention them. You have to announce them publicly. Elu Metziot Shelo. This belongs to you. Matzah Perom Mefuzarin. If you find fruits which are going to be scattered around, Maot Mefuzarot, money scattered around. Krichot Bishut Rabim. If you find stocks in the Bishut Rabim of hay or whatever it is, Vigulei Devela. Some of figs which are dried. Right, which again they stuck together. Or you know, loaves of bread, right, of a, of a baker, or fish, which are tied together. Or pieces of meat, or, or pieces of wool. Or flax, or different cement, which is going to be combed, wool, which is going to be combed. Right, they belong to him. These are the words of Rabbi Meir. Obviously, we're talking about that they do not have a siman. And since they don't have a siman, they themselves are not a siman, so therefore you could keep it to yourself. Mm -hmm. He says, he says no, 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 no. If there's a shinu, there's something different about it. Meaning that you're coming, you're, you're, whether it could be the size, the amount, the, the way where it was put, you have to, you have to announce it. Sometimes if you find a igul shel dvela, which is again like a cake of dates, right? Of the fig, sorry. And then there was a piece of pottery inside of it. Or kikarut, right? Or you find a piece of bread but there's money in the bread. Now, even though they didn't put it the Chavana, whatever it is, right, but they fell on their own, you're still obligated to mention it. Why? Because it's something different. Meaning there's something here. Right? It's a Siman. Rabbi Shimon Melanazar Rabbi Shimon Melanazar says, Kol Kliyam Puriyah, any new utensil which was still not uh, used by the owner, right, in order to come and to actually recognize it 
and chayav lachriz. You don't have to mention it. Why? Because he cannot. He can never know. Meaning, you just bought something. How do you know this is mine? Right? You go to the store. You get a new phone. You're gonna. This is my phone. Yeah. After a year or two years, okay, you have a scratch here, this there, that. Ah, you know exactly what. But it's a new phone. You can't. It's new. You can't see anything. So for there's not gonna be any type of a new thing. <laughs>